My name is Lane Herman, and uh, one of the many things I do is uh, take and video the rockets as they're taking off. I've been uh, setting up remote cameras and videoing the rockets since uh, 2014. It all started with my book. I have written a book about uh, all the full-size test space shuttles. It wasn't until after I finished the book that I found out that this had never been done before. I originally had uh, 350 pages and um, I had to unfortunately condense it um, so that it would bring down the cost. And that actually resulted in uh, where other people have said that every time they turn the page, they learn something new that they did not know about the space shuttle program. The interesting thing about the book is that um, NASA now holds it as um, a piece of missing space history. They've actually told me that. It's a piece of missing space history. The book itself, I actually gave a copy to the Kennedy Space Center employee library. And I got called about a year later, they wanted another copy of the book. And what it was is somebody had actually stolen the book out of the library. This was the first of what I know of at least five times that NASA employees have stolen my book. The whole uh, thing that's so important about the book is when I condensed it, it became something where it was all now rare information and rare photographs that nobody's ever heard of or seen before. And um, I noticed that all of the space shuttles had numbers, but the um, test shuttles, they had numbers, but not all of them had names. And uh, so what happened was, is um, they, they actually skipped a number. A lot of people didn't know or understand why. And uh, it turns out that they really didn't skip a uh, number. Uh, space Shuttle 100, uh, people actually in NASA said it doesn't exist. Well, it was um, Enterprise itself turns out to be an, uh, 101, OV 101. And um, they were saying that they skipped 100. They didn't skip 100. It was a test shuttle. It was a full size, full weight test shuttle. What got more astounding in the book uh, during my research was I found out that it's not one, but it's actually one of two full-size test spatials that they actually misplaced and lost. I chronologically uh, this in the book, tell how it happened and show photographs of how it happened and where they are now. Uh, the space shuttle you know, is, is close to me because I grew up with it. I, I didn't grow up with the other space programs. Um, you know, when, whether it was Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, I wasn't around yet. But I was able to, you know, watch the space shuttle launches and, uh, you know, able to observe them up close. At the end of the program, uh, my book was already written because now I was actually, NASA considered me media. I was invited to come out and I was one of the last people to climb inside and, and before they closed the door inside Space Shuttle Atlantis. I was actually inside that space shuttle, which, uh, you know, that is very special to even, you know, get to even be inside. Um, one of the things that uh, I didn't even really think about, when I came out, there was a guy at the door, he says, congratulations, you've now been on board a real spacecraft. So I, I, um, as media for my book, that allows me media access to NASA. Uh, what I, that has now allowed me to do at that point was I'm allowed to go out and set up remote cameras at the launch sites. The problem with um, building a remote camera is they don't exist. You actually have to figure out how to build a remote camera and re re box for the remotes yourself. A lot of people bring out their big expensive cameras 
and they put them in danger. We're, we're going right next to the rockets. You know, we're between you know, 50 to 100 yards away from the rocket when it's launching. We, set up, uh, we have cameras that have timers. And we have cameras that are set up with audio triggers. When it comes to people putting out their big expensive cameras, that's something I didn't want to do. What I did when I first started coming out, I, I was assisting other people and I was looking at what they were building as far as their equipment goes and I tailored my equipment to work with better with the rockets. And so that's why my stuff is small and I can, that actually allows me to get closer to the rockets without being destroyed. This camera has been many times in front of other cameras that were on tripods that got blown over, knocked over, and smashed from the rocket blast as it was taking off. I built this strong enough to actually withstand and also be small enough that everything just went, goes around it. This was a test. I got permission to do this where I took this box and there was a Delta IV Heavy that was taking off. And so this was put near the base. The box itself took a lot of heat and it melted. It bubbled and melted the tape that's on here. The box was thrown and smashed. All right, the camera itself survived. No problem at all and still goes to launches today. It's this camera that's right in here right now. So that tells me that I built my box right. So I like small, I like compact. So my timer, uh, my battery, and the camera all fit inside this box. One of the things that I did when I, I built my box is I put uh, a piece of window in there. I noticed that a lot of people were getting damaged lenses. This lens is a thousand dollar lens on this camera. And the camera itself, you know, is just as expensive. So I don't want to risk my camera and my lens from being destroyed. But I saw others and they get destroyed all the time. And so that's why I put the window in. You can see pieces of the glass that survived in here. And uh, I've also found from uh, going launch to launch that on um, an average around f every four launches, because Florida is full of sand, the ground is sand, and the, the camera, the, the um, uh, window gets sandblasted, it gets pitted. And so every four to five launches, I actually need to take that window out and remove it and then replace it. Now, I can only imagine what that does to other people's lenses on their cameras, on their big, expensive cameras that get you know, hit all the time. My best memory uh, when it comes to doing launches, um, it actually wasn't a remote uh, launch. Uh, what it was is um, whenever I do a NASA launch, usually I can actually get access to go on the roof of the vehicle assembly building. So I go on the roof and I video from there. My most memorable moment from that was CSR-7 for SpaceX. As the rocket was coming up, it actually crossed over the sun. So at that point, a lot of people stopped taking their videos, stopped taking their, their pictures. Um, I was shooting video at that time, and I actually went and I switched two photos. And so as the rocket kept on going, I was one of the few people that was now left that's actually still taking photos. So as I was following up, you know, the rocket up in the air, I said, uh-oh, this actually got caught on video. So I know my exact words. Um, and a gentleman next to me says, what? And I, you see enough launches, you know when something's going wrong. And I said, that's not good. And he says, what, what? And I said, it's gone. He says, it's gone. Then I hear, all the way down the line. Everybody's like, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. So, you know, I go run over to a friend of mine. I say, I said, I got the shots. I got the pictures of it disintegrating. It get glittered. It, it blew apart and just turned into glitter. He says, I need to get pictures of it. I said, it's already gone. There's no vapor trail. There's nothing. He says, what? I said, look, there's nothing. It's gone. During a presentation where they were doing the Orion reveal, we had Charles Bolton on stage and he's on the podium and he's sitting here pounding his fist on the podium saying, Orion's never going to the space station. People need to understand that. The day that Orion needs to go to the space station, 
NASA's having a bad day. And he went on a five minute rant about that. In that same um, presentation, he also went on another rant saying NASA needs better funding. They need more funding. That we could have astronauts back in space right now within 18 months. The problem is funding. Now, I had all this other media around me. You know, a friend of mine turns to me and says, how come nobody else is paying attention to this? Everybody is ignoring this. They're not doing this, these you know, stories on this. And so it's a problem. They're not reporting it. He's, he's actually up there pounding his fist because he's passionate about it. He wants this to happen. He wants to make a point and get it across. And it's not happening. You know, I looked around at uh, a lot of these other news agencies. The, um, the uh, regular television broadcast media, they're just doing blurbs. Oh, here we have, have a new rocket. Here's what we're planning to do with the new rocket. They're not talking about, you know, what the points were that uh, the NASA chief was trying to get across. I look at the online news, space dedicated outlets, and they're doing not that story, they're doing retro stories, stories that about a launch from 1994. Well, at that time was 2014, actually it was probably 2013. And uh, they're saying, you know, you know, nothing that's important. They're just rehashing old stuff. And I'm sitting there saying, NASA's got more. Not just NASA, we've got, you know, commercial companies that are going to space now. It's getting bigger. There's something happening every day. Something new is happening directed towards space every day, and it's not being reported. So I created Spacehead News. So every day I put up two articles. It's on Facebook. You can go there and find Spacehead News on Facebook and look up every day. There's two new articles. It's always something new, always something going on that's not being reported by the regular media, and it's not being ported by the other space news online outlets. So this is important stuff that's getting looked over. Nobody's reporting it, or if they are, they're underreporting it. And so I try to focus on that. So that's, that's space head news. Oh, and I make the cartoons too. <laughs> I really like, you know, investigating. Uh, I like doing the research. That's, you know, how my book came about is doing the research. And so when a story comes up, I actually like digging into it to try and find out more than what's actually being reported out there. If I can find out more and report something that nobody else has reported, that's golden for me. I love that. So one of the uh, nice things about, uh, you know, between my book and Spacehead News and getting to know other people in the industry, I originally started out where I was a Department of Defense contractor. I actually worked on some rockets in the past. I was SMAB T3, Solid Rocket Motor Assembly for the Titan III. I was an inspector for them. So as I progressed on my journey um, from bec becoming a uh, defense contractor, transitioning to now being media, it's become a whole new adventure where you know people I know have given me things. I've also obtained things that uh, you know, we're part of the space program. One of the things I'm most proud of is that I've been able to actually obtain legally some real space shuttle artifacts. And it's not just space shuttle, I've, I've obtained other artifacts as well. But um, this here is a, a getaway package that was flown STS-45 on Challenger. We lost Challenger, so this is special. It was part of the Atlas getaway package that rode and flew inside the cargo bay. And these are parts that were uh, removed after that mission because that was an experiment just for that mission. So these are special, this is, this is history. Something else that's rather interesting and, and neat is this little item here. So part of what's so special about this foam is that it actually was uh, the test foam. Before they put the foam on the external tanks, what they do is they actually do tests on the foam first. And so this was test foam from the final Atlantis flight, from the final space shuttle flight. So this, this item here, I keep it in this bag uh, specifically for a reason at the moment. Um, it also sent me on a journey. 
it's, it's an, another actually flown piece of a space shuttle. Um, this is um, the FES. Um, it actually flew in the cargo bay on all of the missions all the way up until 1989 before it was removed. The uh, part was made obsolete and uh, it was removed from all space shuttles at that time. This actually is an artifact that I was able to legally purchase. And uh, so this was a, an obsolete piece I was able to purchase and it sent me on a journey because even though I have the serial number and the part number, I didn't know which orbiter it flew on. I had to figure out where it came from. So this became a year long journey to figure it out. Because these were a permanent part of the shuttles, a friend of mine who actually worked on the shuttles, he actually went out to California and he picked up Endeavour and had it delivered to NASA. And he said Endeavour was ordered without the FES. So that part didn't, it was no longer, it wasn't even put onto that space shuttle. So there's two I can cross off the list. Um, during that year, I found that Atlantis's was online and sold at auction. Narrows me down to Discovery and Columbia. At the end of that year, I actually found the other FES part. So I was able to purchase that as well. So I have both Columbia and Discovery's FES covers. Uh, FES was a Freon cooling system that they used as they were re-entering uh, into the atmosphere. This uh, was a system that was actually supposed to help cool down some of the electronic parts. There, there are many um, feelings about the space shuttle program. Um, there were good things and bad things about it. Um, it was holding us to low Earth orbit. It wasn't breaking us out and going back to the moon or anything like that. But it did give us a platform for experimentation and learning more about this new environment that we were wandering into. Uh, it's a totally new adventure that uh, we needed. It helped build the space station. We needed that as well. And um, the problem is, is that uh, we need both something like shuttle and something that will take us beyond Earth as well. We need both programs together at the same time. And it's a shame that we haven't been able to do that yet. My wish for the uh, US space program is for politics to take a back seat and let them do their job. Uh, we need to you know, get up there into space. We need to expand our knowledge and what we're doing and grow and pioneer beyond what we already are.